please meet uh, the nephew of the great leader the, who has brought the freedom for us Netaji Subhashan was nephew Mr. Surya Kumar Bose uh, Sir, I want to ask some questions from you for our young people uh, that how to get inspired from Netaji Subhashan Bose like he has done so much for us and uh, he has not written, he has always told to not, not write his story, let's get the freedom first. So, uh, on his behalf, we want to know from you that how to get inspired from his, uh, all the things that he has done. How to get inspired from Netaji Swasthan See, it all depends on the individual because his whole life is an inspiration to youngsters. Uh, because he did things from his childhood, he did all kinds of things. He went out into the hills when he was quite a young teenager uh, to look for a guru. He came back home quite disappointed and then realized that, that sort of a guru is not going to give him any inspiration. Vivekananda was his real guru philosophically as well. Because, and then I studied philosophy. And um, he always felt, because you know, don't forget the times were different. We are an independent country now. In those days, we were run by the Brits. So, all freedom loving Indians wanted freedom. And that was one of the main things that they wanted. Okay, so he insisted that. Now you should uh, build up your career, your uh, education should be, should assist you and you should uh, strive for independence. Uh, he was not, let's see, he was not necessarily someone who would only go for uh, military action. He supported Gandhiji's non-violence, non-cooperation movement, but that was only to a certain extent he realized that these were pinpricks to the then British government. And if you uh, look up British history, Winston Churchill had said, Gandhiji is the best policeman we have in India. He said, so long as the Indian people continue to have non-violent movements, these are pinpricks, we don't have to worry. Shubhas and Sharath were the two who really worried them. And they were scared of these people because they said uh, they are, they would, they would take, uh, I mean, violent action. So that is something which the Brits didn't want. Now, uh, right from the beginning, Netaji knew that the revolutionary movement in India has to take place but it has to be supported by external action. If you look at uh, Develer as Ireland or uh, uh, other freedom movements elsewhere in the world where outside help was necessary, and he said, well, my enemy's enemy is my compatriot, a friend, but not, a, not in the usual term of the word friend. So, uh, that was the reason why he wanted to get outside help. Uh, he wanted to uh, ask Soviet Russia for help. When they didn't agree, he went on to the Germans. They had asked him to come over. Italy was also willing to help. Yeah, yeah. See, Nedaji has written his so-called unfinished autobiography, the Indian pilgrim. I, I think every person who wants to know more about Srivastava Bose should read his own writings, Indian pilgrim, Indian struggle. And it is quite unique that although he was very much involved in the political uh, movement at that time, his books, Indian struggle, for instance, Two volumes are very neutral. And uh, where we can get such books like, uh, uh, like I'm a common student, 
So, like, well, you see, Netadis, uh, now these, Facebook. okay, quite, quite a lot is available on the internet or Amazon, mm-hmm. or uh, you can get a lot of PDFs. You may have heard that when Netaji became president of the Congress in 1938, he set up the Planning Commission. That was the birth of the Planning Commission. And he made Jawala the first chairman of the Planning Commission. Normally, the president of the party would be the chairman, but he made Jawala the chairman of the Planning Commission. But he got quite a few scientists agricultural scientists and others to make proposals and he also had his own suggestions and uh, a whole lot of programs were planned because one of the programs he wanted to carry out was family planning that's where majority of the congress members of the working committee were against him he said you cannot do that he wanted to get rid of casteism by law, Gandhiji, Nehru, they were up in arms. He said, no, no, you cannot get rid of casteism. That's our own bank. And these are things people seem to forget. Yeah, actually people don't know about the Netaji's views on casteism because they are so, I have so many friends from different communities. We just ask them. There are several incidents that I have heard that he had when he was kid or in different office areas, he just held different people yes. going different places. He never made any any kind of differentiation. Uh, just an example, in the Azadim government, and this was in Singapore, uh, the chief cook came to him and said, Sir, we have a problem. The Muslims want their halal meat, the Sikhs want their kind of meat, the others want something else, what do we do? So he said, <coughs> sorry, he said, get the different kinds of meat or whatever and come to me and get one large tumbler. So the chief cook brought all that and said, put them all in one, cook it. Those who are hungry, want to eat, they can eat. The others need not. Within a couple of days, there was no issue. You see, this is how you can get rid of a lot of idiosyncratic, you know, ideas that people have. They put it all to religion, where religion probably doesn't have anything to do with it. So, uh, I mean, there's many such examples. He never really differentiated between religions and between castes. He himself was a practicing Hindu, but Hinduism, as you definitely know, accepts all kinds. I mean, even atheists. I'm an atheist. And uh, so that that was possible. Now, as I said, I mean, those who saw him, or heard him speak, or read his writings, were very much influenced by his thoughts. Now, it is very difficult in a few minutes to talk about Netaji's ideology in detail. But as I was mentioning the Planning Commission, when the centenary celebration, the Planning Commission published a book, and Madhu Dandavate wrote the preface, and he wrote that what Netaji had planned in 1938, and this was 1997, he said 60% of all that has still not been realized, and is still valid in India today. These are things that, you know, uh, one can that, that book is, by the way, available as a PDF on the internet. Okay. Uh, if you want, I can send it to you. It's, it's worthwhile reading. Uh, well, it's, people will it is not his, his book, but his thoughts. Okay. And there's so many other books that have come out of him from different angles. Some are philosophical, some are political, some are very biographical. So uh, one, one should pick out one or two from each kind and read them. It, 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 is, it is very difficult, although he lived officially till only he was 48, but what he covered in those years is normally uh, two or three lifetimes.
as uh, we are uh, looking for after his after life but uh, his before life is very important we can learn everything and that was a big thing that he has done all the things we will learn uh, what he has done and that is most important and we can inspire from such things rather than because there are so many theories after his death so i will convince as you, as you said that the, okay we can think out that but uh, this we can yeah because i mean his the message is what his life was what he did what he achieved what he wanted to achieve that is what is more important than all the other fictional stories that are being circulated all over all over the place and uh, yes so so in this uh, complete message you have just described like uh, if you follow so as chan goes so you mm, means it is a symbolic for uh, no divide and rule no religion no caste just india and more you sacrifice for others more you will get grow so that is uh, sebastian was yes he said for such a great thing and i hope that lots of people who will get inspired from gita ji mm-hmm. and will lead our country in that direction well let us hope so that at last if we can uh, implement his some part of his ideology um, everybody wants to just uh, use him for the vote bank uh, it's not just one party the many political parties doing it you know and there is naturally a um, lot of romanticism behind it because we the last recorded photograph of his was when he was stepping down from a plane in August 1945 he was 48 he was young so that is what the picture one has in one's mind and it is the eternally young and uh, he naturally inspired so many generations and so many different nationalities i mean the japanese i have met they said he was one of the greatest people that we have ever met come across so uh, i mean it's not just in me unfortunately in our country uh, we have not studied so much but with the time now we are getting with social media and yeah. other things so i hope that this will increase and people will learn and the kind of message that netaji has given so people will improve yes that's also thank you sir jai hind jai hind